George Mason head coach Dave Paulson is with us. I'm Brian Fenley with Fox Sports Radio. It is an absolute pleasure, coach, to have you with us. What kind of player, though, were you at Williams? Well, Brian, I was short, <laughs> but I made up for it by being slow. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, you know, they say a coach on the court, you know, I was uh, – um, I always knew I was going to maybe be a coach because I was not a very good player. But uh, studied the game and, and uh, uh, learned a lot from my college coach, Harry Shee, who is now the director of athletics at, at Dartmouth. So um, uh, great experience, but was not a good player. Let's put that right out there. I, I noticed, Dave, that there is a common trend of like, walk-ons or, or reserves that end up being better coaches. I don't know what that is, but sometimes the best players don't make the best coaches. And why do you think that is the case? And I see that a lot. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, you find some guys who are great players who become really good sure. coaches. Too. So I think there's exceptions to everything. But, you know, I think, um, I think regardless of what kind of player you were, you have to be willing to approach the game like a coach if you're going to be a coach. Sure, and sure. so maybe I got a head start on that because I wasn't a very good player. <laughs> so thinking the game more globally, thinking about how things should be taught, corrected, what works, what doesn't work. And if you're a great player, you're immersed in the moment. Like the best players that I coach, we – you know, we want them to embrace the process of just being the best player they can be and focus on what they have to focus. If they think about too many things. You know, Jerry Darkinian uh, always said, the more a kid thinks, the less, the slower his feet get. Um, and so, so I think part of it is that if you're a great player, you're immersed in becoming a great player and, you know, kind of have a tunnel vision, if you will. Um, and so those great players who become great coaches have to learn how to expand their vision. If you're not a great player, you better have a wide vision to begin with. I would have to imagine, Coach, being someone who's so committed to what you're doing, and I see behind you all the different plays that you're scripting up and, and trying to integrate some new pieces and philosophies to what you're trying to run as a program. Do you ever find yourself like – on the beach or somewhere unexpected in your mind just starts thinking of X's and O's. Like it's, I'm doing something where the last thing people would think I'm thinking about is X's and O's and drawing up a play in my mind. But here, here's coach Dave thinking about something like that. Every single day. <laughs> and, and the problem, and again, the good news is I'm, I think there's absolutely no way my wife is going to listen to this or hear this. So that, you know, I get the thing. What are you thinking about? Yeah. And then I have to quickly pivot and make something up. Um, so I don't seem to be this narrow-minded, obsessed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, all the time. You know, in, in, in my morning runs, thinking about this offensive approach or defensive approach or role-playing, what I'm going to say to this particular kid or all the time. And so people will see me taking a run and I'm talking. <laughs> and I'm talking to myself. Um, so uh, you're not a lot of uh, sanity here. Yes. You've been talking a lot on Zoom, and your willingness to get a firmer grasp on technology has benefited you in a big way, especially the last couple months. How has it been a game changer for you in embracing technology and using that as a coach? Well, I mean, I think one of the things is – um, you know, in terms of coaching development, um, <clears throat> it used to be, right, that you would, maybe I would talk on the phone with a buddy, a partner, a, a former assistant, hey, what do you guys do with this? What do you, how do you approach this? You know, mm -hmm. what's this new set? Um, certainly, you know, we, we have access to Synergy. So we get all the games, NBA games, European games. So we always would break those down. Um, but in terms of going to clinics or just, you know, the ability to get on a Zoom with a coaching friend yeah. and, and say, hey, share your screen, show me what you guys do, you know, in your breakdown and your ball screen coverages. Or So we've done some of this. I never heard of Zoom. 
you know, before. Um, uh, so, so I think in terms of education, um, and certainly during this pandemic, it's uh, obviously a horrific situation. Yeah. Um, and and tragic in in many many cases. Uh, but one of the unintended positive consequences is it's 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 provided for myself and and many other coaches a mini sabbatical, if you will. It, we can really kind of immerse ourselves in all those film studies and thoughts and projects that you always thought you were going to do, and then you're getting on the road to this AU tournament and this game uh, get in the way. Um, you've been able to do it. Now the challenge would be. Um, myself and most coaches around now you got 58 new ideas to try to implement and sure. you, you know somebody tweeted i feel bad for those poor college players when they come back because their <laughs> coaches are going to bombard these yeah. kids and, and less is usually more sure you know in coaching so uh finding you know how much to uh, adapt rather than adopt it was always a challenge and i love as well coach the one-on-one -on -one Zoom interviews you have where you bring on, whether it's a former player or a colleague in coaching, you do a great job of really talking about the game in depth. And I urge anyone to check out your Twitter profile and, and follow those interviews. They're very inspiring and enlightening. What's so hard about winning in the Atlantic 10 as far as just how deep that conference is? Well, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, it's hard. You know, I mean, and, and it's really, really deep, okay, in terms of, you know, quality teams. Um, you've got – it is a great coaches league. I mean, and there are um, – you know, obviously we have the National Coach of the Year this year in Anthony Grant, yeah. okay? But a in, in phenomenal coach and has really done, I will say, a phenomenal job of leading our eight ten coaches in getting together and – addressing issues of racial injustice and, and, and social inequity, um, you know, in the current climate. Um, so phenomenal coach, but there's so many uh, that people know about and then so many that people don't know about that are just outstanding coaches. Um, the players are phenomenal. And, and, and in most cases, they're four-year guys. Sure. So, um, you know, uh, not only they're very talented, but, you know, the older teams tend to win in this league. And then to me, the the interesting thing is most leagues tend to evolve to play a very, very similar style from top to bottom. And there's none of that in the A-10. You know, you've got you've got full court pressure teams, you've got half court man-to-man -man teams, you've got matchup zone teams. Um, you've got a really up-tempo teams, you have methodical teams, you have inside-oriented, guard-oriented. And so every single night is a different uh, prep. Um, and so it requires us coaches to be really on top of your game, but also your players, um, you know, every game plan, I should say, because we try to stay similar to our approach, but what you're going to have to guard against and what you're going to have to score, try to score against will vary so significantly from one game to the next. What is your identity defensively? Because I can tell from your scheme and style that you're very voracious out there, really a, a ball hawking kind of team. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I think we, we, we try to play, um, you know, we want to be very solid in the half court, uh, man to man defensively. Um, you try to play, um, not as well as UVA for sure, but uh, pack line defense. Sure. But we want, but we've tried, especially last year. We had really good depth early in the year, and then lost a number of guys to injury. Unfortunately, uh, we we really tried to extend full court um, and, and some three quarter court pressure back to our man to man. Um, um, you know, and I think we work really hard at it. Uh, we have not yet become an elite defensive team here at Mason. Hopefully that's around the corner this season. When's the, when's the time as a coach when you've had to be the most resilient? Um, to some degree, I might even say this past season. Sure. Um, we were out of the gates great. We were 11-2, won the Cayman Islands Classic. 
Um, we were reintegrating Justin Kyer, who was uh, most improved player in the league, second team all conference player, who we thought could have been one of the top five or six players in our league. Sure. Uh, he had a stress fracture, missed six to eight weeks. We won these tournaments. Um, you know, we, we were starting to ease him back in. Um, we had a, a sophomore point guard, um, Jamal Hartwell, who was leading us in scoring early in the year, shooting great. He got he in he got sick that basically rendered him ineffective for nine games at the same time that Justin refractured his foot. Um, and I remember our last game before Justin got hurt, we we won on the road at LaSalle. We played a complete game offensively, defensively. I remember getting on that bus. I was as satisfied yeah. after a road win as I've ever been in 26 years as a coach. And I'm like, we've got a chance to compete at or near the top of the 810. Two days later, he breaks his foot. Um, and, we're, you know, it's, it was demoralizing for our team. He was such an inspirational leader. It, you know, it, it, it had an even stronger impact on his teammates than most injuries do. And, and we had to kind of uh, change midstream. And we, we replaced a, a combo guard, dynamic, off-the-bounce player playing a four out one in alignment. And then we started a freshman center and had to switch to kind of a three out two in alignment. So we had to rebuild our guys emotionally. And then we had to kind of change our, our defensive and offensive approach. Um, and that was challenging. Um, I think it was really bad at the time. I think all of our players that played last year now are all returning. They're veterans. I think guys improved more than they would have otherwise. Sure. But it was, a, it was a tough flow when it happened last year. You guys have so much talent. I mean, like you said, you started out 11-2, and two, and you could see just if everybody was together, this team had so much going forward. And it's, it's exciting to see where this program is going forward, Coach, because I just see this program on the rise and continuing to grow and grow. Where do you feel like this program is right now compared to when you took the job and the work you've done to build it up? Well, I think, um, I hope, I'm knocking, yeah, on wood. I'm knocking on wood too. Okay. Um, going into this season, well, number one, the hope is that we have a season. Okay. Um, yeah, sir, exactly. Um, but knock on wood, we're going to have, I think, 13 scholarship players. Hopefully they're all healthy. Um, who are all legitimate A-10 players. So we have uh, depth. Um, we have positional size. Early on, we did not have uh, the type of length on the wings and the positional size up front that we needed to compete in the A-10. Um, and I think we're going to be old this year, assuming and hoping that everyone's healthy. So that we're going to have, uh, I'm thinking out loud, AJ yeah. Wilson, okay, Greg Collect, uh, Javon Green, um, and Ian Boyd okay. as, a, so, as a fifth year senior who was injured. So we'll have four seniors. Um, and so I think just our roster composition is, is where it needs to be. And, you know, I think I've learned, you know, in terms of, uh, what wins or what we need or what's essential to be able to compete in the A-10. Uh, and certainly positional size and length, um, you know, I think are underrated. And I think we have that. Um, so, you know, I feel confident that, that we're the strongest heading into the season as we have been. Um, so hopefully that'll carry over. George Mason, head coach Dave Paulson joins us. I'm Brian Fenley with... Fox Sports Radio, what's one game coach over your career where to this day you can't believe you won it? Like you're like, wow, like we really did that, and I don't know how. Well, um, in 2003, I was a coach at Williams College, and we won the Division Three National Championship. And we were uh, – we finished that – I think we finished the year 31-1. So we were 30 and one and we were down eight with three minutes to go to Gustavus Adolphus. And I was, I'll admit it, I was, you know, on my knee coaching the team, yeah. thinking, what am I gonna say to these guys? 
in the locker room after this heartbreaking loss. And then everything that could possibly go right wow. <laughs> went right. And we ended up winning in regulation. Um, and it was just, it was surreal, you know, and obviously it was for the national championship. Um, and that one certainly um, comes to mind because, you know, we had the game lost and, and we ended up winning. And there's certainly been games where you had the game won and it, it's gone the other way. But that's one that probably most comes to mind. Yeah, in the national championship as well. I mean, I, I can't even imagine that, that sensation where here you are. Here's how I'm going to talk to my guys after – we fall short, and then it completely reverses direction in your favor. I can't even imagine what, what it was like in the, the locker room afterwards and what you said to your guys and how relieved you were. My final question for you, Coach, is over this offseason, and, and guys have had to try to be creative as to where do you get a gym or where can you get, a, get shots up, what hoop do you use, and doing it as safe as possible. What are some of the tenets and key concepts that you're trying to illustrate to your guys over this offseason so that when we do get that opportunity to get back to playing, that they'll be where you want them to be or as much as they can, given how crazy the last couple of months have been? I think one of the things where I, you know, we just got off a, a, a team – Call. We use WebEx platform. I got to put in that little plug. I think maybe it'll like, get us a few more free hours or something. But yeah. um, we really, I think, made great progress. Our guys have really started to talk and share. I, I said, we're going to have these team meetings for, you know, I, I didn't know it was going to be five months. Yeah. Okay. But over five months, and I can't be talking the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so, my assistants have done a great job getting small groups to lead discussions across a variety of topics. Um, and so for me, I've kind of changed, kind of changed my outlook on how I approach coaching them. They're capable of more. We have to train them and show them. Sure. But I think rather than, you know, always the top down approach, uh, I think I learned from our guys uh, this off season as much as, as they've been able to learn from wow. me. Um, in terms of on the court, you know, what we have done is we've done a lot more film study with our players on a one-on-one, one-on-one uh, -on -one WebEx where I share my screen and, and it might be, here's what you did well, here's what you got to improve on, here's an example from an NBA team or another college player. Uh, we've done positional meetings like that. My assistants have done that. So, you know, can we become better thinkers of the game and understanding of the game, given the fact that we don't know what they've done? And some of our guys have gotten in the gym a lot. Sure. Some maybe not at all. You know, the, there's only so much you can do in the in-home body weight workouts. Totally. Um, you know, and the running in the park. So, um, you know, we'll see how that carries over. But I am really encouraged about our guys willingness to share and talk and and really engage uh at a level that i've never had before wow. that's powerful i am thrilled to see you guys flourish on the court and dave paulson george mason head coach such a pleasure really treasured this opportunity to chat with you and i hope our paths cross in the near future and i can't wait to see you the product you have on the court when we get back to some level of normalcy. Well, that sounds great. Thanks for having me on and stay safe.